Day two of the Trayvon Bennett trial. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. And I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, the trial for Trayvon Bennett continues today. Bennett is, Bennett is the man accused of gunning down a Central High School student nearly two years ago. He faces multiple charges, including murder and armed robbery, for the death of 18-year-old Markel Ross in 2012. Ross was one of several Prince George's students shot and killed during a violent period that year. Rochelle Metzger has the latest from the courthouse in Upper Marlboro. Prosecutors are presenting their case in the trial of Trayvon Bennett, the man who's accused of gunning down a Central High School student during an attempted robbery nearly two years ago. Now on the stand today, a Prince George's County detective who was investigating a separate robbery in the same area using the same type and model gun as the one used to kill Markel Ross. The detective says in that case, the victim survived and gave a suspect description that matched Bennett right down to his neck tattoos. The detective also testified that the investigation led him to a Capitol Heights residence where Bennett was living with friend Jeremy Brown. Three men were home at the time, Bennett Brown and friend Kendall Bland. The detective says only Bennett matched the suspect description and was identified by the victim. A search of the home also uncovered ammunition and two weapons, including a 38 revolver later determined to be the same weapon used in both crimes. Prosecutors say both Bland and Brown have alibis for Ross's murder murder, which took place on September 11, 2012. 18-year-old honor student Markel Ross woke up, got ready, grabbing his cell phone, earbuds and notebook, left his Capitol Heights home and set out for school, alone, on foot, up Central Avenue. According to prosecutors, the defendant also woke up, got ready, grabbed his friend's 38 revolver and set out up Central Avenue to rob someone. That's where he allegedly came upon Ross, demanded his cell phone and other property, and then shot the teen in the chest when he refused. The defense says not so and argues there is no evidence nor eyewitnesses that place Bennett at the murder scene. The prosecution will continue to call its witnesses tomorrow. The trial is expected to last all week. From Upper Marlboro, I'm Rochelle Metzger, CTV News. Residents at a new Carrollton apartment complex wake up to, to the sound of gunshots this morning. Officers arrived at Heritage Square Apartments in the 7800 block of Riverdale Road about 4 this morning. They discovered a male victim lying in the grass behind an apartment building. He was pronounced dead on the scene. The homicide is still under investigation. Anyone with information on this incident is asked to call 301-352-1200. And a combination speed and red light camera has some Marylanders crying foul. The issue involves placement of a camera, this one here, and who operates it. Now, the camera is maintained by the District of Columbia, but according to AAA Mid-Atlantic, surveyors' maps indicate that the device is well-situated well within the state of Maryland, making it illegal. CTV spoke with a motorist who received three $100 tickets. I feel it's unfair for D.C. to have warning signs up in Maryland. You know, me being a Maryland resident, thinking it's for a camera in Maryland, and I'm getting a D.C. ticket. This is an illegal camera and because it's illegal, because of the illegality of it, then every ticket should be refunded. Well, Towson says those violations go back years. CTV did reach out to district officials. Our phone calls were not returned. And there was a smell of natural gas along Route 1 in Laurel today. That's because a natural gas line was hit at the construction site of a future uh, outback steakhouse. Now, one of the contractors was digging with a backhoe when he hit the service line. Everyone was evacuated until the valve was found and fixed. Now, because the line was outside, officials say that made it safer than it had been had it happened, the incident indoors. They had to call in BGE to locate the source of that gas leak. The workers were pulled out of that construction zone until that leak was found, and it has now been capped. BGE says they did pinch off the line, and workers are now allowed back in the area. A juvenile is charged with arson of an abandoned home in Laurel. On Saturday, firefighters put out a house fire in the 13,000 block of Engelman Drive. The two-story single-family home was vacant, and the fire showed from an attached garage. Two days after the fire on Monday, personnel from the office of the fire marshal charged a 16-year-old male with first-degree arson and other charges. If found guilty, he could face juvenile detention until his 21st birthday. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Byron Scott.